What's this little airport called? This is Marana Regional Airport. Now, your facilities is located uh, just within flying distance from here. Yes, so uh, yeah, we're, uh, our facility is 10 miles due west of this airport, and we just have our own little airstrip and our build center out there. Now, when you say build center, uh, we're standing in front of a little lightning aircraft. Is that the aircraft that you're uh, set up to handle there? That's what we do. We, we build this lightning aircraft out there. Uh, we invite people out and, and uh, uh, to take a look at it. It's a nice, uh, a nice place to go because you get to stay there, eat there, build the airplane on your schedule. If it, you know, it takes basically three weeks to build the airplane, but most people can't come for three weeks straight, so they split it up in different segments. Now, this airplane is light sport. It's coming then into your facilities as a kit? It comes in our facility as a kit. And if I were to look at that kit uh, as it is delivered to your door, what would I see? You'd see uh, uh, a fuselage all in one piece. You'd That's see... similar to the one that you have behind you here? Yes, uh-huh. You'd see wings that are closed out, gel coated, and they, they need wing tips and, you know, holes cut in them for, for uh, ailerons, flaps, and that sort of thing. But everything basically in the kit is a closed out fiberglass part. It's gel coated, and so it, it's really not a fiberglass project, it's more of a metal project. Uh, rig, uh, cutting and fitting pieces together, making brackets out of aluminum uh, to, to uh, connect everything together and make it function as an airplane. Now, when I'm doing this, you're supplying me all of the tools and the other things that I'm going to need? Yes, we're supplying the tools, uh, the resin, the fiberglass, all the things that we need to uh, complete the job. All you need to do is bring yourself. Now, before I arrive at your location, is there any education, anything that I need to train up on in order to do what, you're, what I need? No, it's, a, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a simple airplane to build, but the problem is, is you know, building it at home on your own, uh, it's read the manual, see if you can understand the manual, read it again, and then hold, take a deep breath and see if I can do this part of the project, and then check, and so you're doing so many double checks. What we do is re remove that from the process so you can actually just build the airplane and not worry about understanding how it goes together. Now, when I'm building this airplane, can I customize it to my own needs? Yes, you can, to, to certain degrees. Uh, uh, we, we put the uh, a Jabiru engine in it, and we also put the 320 and the Titan 340 engine in them. But instrumentation-wise, I'm free to pick out uh, Dynon, Skyview, whatever I want to use? Yes, the avionics, whatever you want, we've been able to do. We've done full Garmin panels, full Dynon panels, Grand Rapids. Uh, MGL, whatever, uh, whatever you like the best. Okay. Now, what about uh, the interior of the aircraft as far as seating goes? Am I able to, like, is there different packages or that type of? You can fit it so that it fits your structure. You know, if you're a tall person, you need to keep the seat pans down in toward the bottom of the airplane. If you're a short person, they can be brought up a little, so it's custom fits you a little bit, but. Uh, uh, the interior and things, uh, we use uh, custom uh, aircraft covers out of Arlington, Washington that makes our leather interiors for us and she sews them up and sends them down to us and we install them. Okay. So what's the process then if I wanted to get into something like this? Uh, I contact you and then what happens? Uh, we first off we have to get a kit on hand for you and I try to keep one in, in on hand all the time but if I if it was sold and somebody wanted one it takes about six weeks for us to get a kit and then uh, after we have the kit and we know all of the crucial parts are there then we can schedule a start time uh, the airplane goes together pretty fast so if you got crucial parts that are back ordered you can't really start because you're going to get uh, up against something that that'll impede your progress and uh, 
So we, we, we need to make sure that we got everything we need and then we just get started. Okay, so I have a, a kit ordered. It takes, uh, say, four to six weeks to get a kit delivered to your door. Uh, how busy are you at your build center at that point in time? Am I going to have to wait a month or two months before I can get to access to start building it? Yeah, we uh, once you come to the build center, uh, because you live right at the build center, eat at the build center, we're a long ways from entertainment and town and things, so we just build airplanes, you know, and some people are so used to an eight hour day that they really lose their focus after eight hours, so we only work eight hours, you know, but typically we work 12 hour days or whatever is, uh, you know, what whatever the customer wants. Now, I can build this airplane as a light sport. I can also build it as an experimental light sport, and I can also build it as a straight experimental. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, the uh, the uh, experimental sport compliant is registered at 1,320 pounds, and then the airplane, when it's finished, will have about a 500-pound useful load. But the airframe is designed around 1,550 pounds, and so. You can um, build it with a Jabiru engine or one of the other uh, Lycomings or uh, Titan engines uh, and, uh, uh, and build it just as an experimental. Now, let's just look at the light sport uh, category then. What type of performance am I going to be expecting out of this aircraft when it's up and uh, ready to fly? We have to uh, dumb it down. The airplane wasn't built originally as a light sport aircraft. And so its speed capabilities are in excess of sport limits. So we, we have to uh, dumb it down by pitch of the prop and, and uh, placards that uh, limit the RPM, con continuous RPM use, things to keep it in the 120 knot range. But when, we, when you're cruising this airplane, it will cruise at a full 120 knots as a sport compliant airplane. Now that sounds to be a pretty fast little airplane. Uh, what's it like down in the lower end? The lower end, uh, basically if you're in miles per hour, it's uh, 38 miles per hour is the touchdown speed or the stall, uh, you know, the, the, with the flaps down stall speed is about 38 miles per hour. So it's, it's a, a very manageable, mild-mannered airplane uh, approaches. 60 miles per hour or about 50, 52 knots and and uh, then you round out over the runway and just wait for it to settle down and, and uh, it's going to touch down at, like I said at about 38 miles per hour or about 32 knots. And what kind of control system are you using it? Is it like a standard stick and rudder uh, dual control system? Yeah, it's got dual control side by side with a stick between your legs and a rudder pedal for each foot and the, uh, uh, it's got differential braking and it has a castering nose wheel, differential braking with right and left brakes. Okay. Uh, throttle location and flaps? Uh, throttle, throttle location is in the, uh, on the cent central column or the console area and the, uh, the flaps are electric and they're most generally controlled right on the stick, but you can put a toggle switch on the, the instrument panel. Okay. Now, this seems to be a great little cross-country plane, but if I'm going cross-country, there's two things I need. I'm going to need fuel, I'm going to need some place to put baggage. Both of those accommodate in this airplane? Yes. Uh, uh, the, this, this airplane, because we put some of the bigger engines in it now, we have a one-size-fits-all fuel tank. It has the new, fr new airframes have 40 gallons of fuel, so if you got a Jabiru power plant in there, you, you got over eight hours of range, and so if you can stand it that long, you could go from Tucson, Arizona to Seattle, Washington nonstop. So then I don't need any overnight cat. Uh, yeah, baggage. then you don't need any overnight towns, but it's always fun to fly into a a community that you haven't been around and land at a strange airport and discover a nice place to stay and meet some folks. That's one of my favorite things to do about flying. But there is a little uh, storage area in behind the seats from what I understand? The storage capacity on the Lightning is is 60 pounds behind the seat. And my wife and I, we as we travel for shows, 
we each have a 15 pound duffel bag and the show has a 15 pound duffel bag and that's what we use in the uh, luggage compartment. There's, there's plenty of volume there for, he for lighter stuff. Uh, but if you need, my wife is a small person and she, uh, she has a soft pack that she fills with clothes and she sets on them. So she gets more than 15 pounds because she can set on those and that's in a better uh, CG range for the airplane. Okay. So how busy are you then? Uh, like uh, I want to get an airplane next week. I'm just going to give you a call and you and I are going to get started. Well, uh, right now I have a kit on hand. so. If you, if you had your money ready and you had your time ready, we could start on Monday. So if I want to get in contact with you, what's the easiest way to do that? Uh, if you get in contact me through lightningaircraftwest.net. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. You bet. The Copper State Fly-In has been bringing aviation enthusiasts in the Southwest US together since 1973. This year we are thrilled to be hosting the Copper State Fly-In at the Buckeye Municipal Airport, KBXK, in conjunction with the Buckeye Airfare. The dates for the fly-in are February 8, 9 and 10, 2019. We anticipate that the 2019 Copper State Fly-In will break all of our previous attendance records. Admission and parking to the 2019 Copper State Fly-In and Buckeye Airfare are free, including the two-hour air shows, beginning at noon, Saturday and Sunday. So make sure to join us for a weekend of free fun for the entire family. Sea Light Sport Aircraft, Experimental Aircraft, Ultralights, Vintage and Military Aircraft, as well as Action Pack Demonstrations. Visit the many educational forums, aircraft displays, youth activities, or one of the over 100 vendors. Copper State Flying Inc. is a volunteer-run, non-profit organization dedicated to promoting recreational and general aviation through events, scholarships, and public education. Proceeds from the Copper State Fly-In help support scholarship programs for youth seeking careers in the aerospace industry. Copper State is the largest fly-in of its type in the western United States and the fourth largest fly-in in the U.S. We look forward to seeing you, February 8-10, 2019, at the Buckeye Municipal Airport, 3000 South Palo Verde Road, Buckeye, Arizona.